Hello, welcome back. It's Fred with the hands in his shed. And in a moment, we're going to be doing some testing, which is what I promised to do, on some of the stuff I've got in the shed, mostly the LED lights. We're going to do some testing with the little Truman radio, and then we're going to move on to the Texan radio, the 600. We're just going to sort of see whether those LED lights do cause any interference, because LED lights are notoriously bad for call be causing interference on radio so we're going to be putting those to the test i haven't done it yet so i'm not sure myself and see what happens before i just in get into that i'd just like to say a big thank you to all of the comments that i've had on the shed renovation videos both on this channel and also fred in the shed too um overwhelming positive response really really encouraging um yeah thank you ever ever so much and i've had some really really good suggestions um i forget the people that made the suggestions so please forgive me one of the good really good suggestions is to at some point fit another a second sort of panel of acrylic or something over the window here a poor man's attempt at uh, double glazing just to sort of keep the coldness it out if you like and a few people have said that yeah and it's true that in the future because i've sort of panelled this wall in i might be likely to suffer from a little bit of mold or something possibly behind that panel because the air can doesn't circulate you can get trapped etc yeah that is a good possibility of that i really don't know at this stage i'm, I'm just going to sort of see how the shed does throughout the winter and if i do start seeing any kind of mold or particles of dampness things like that what, what i should have to do is i'll have to introduce a couple of air vents somewhere around the walls i can just simply knock those through and get a couple of sort of just you know no i won't put i won't put electric fans in again because of rf noise but i'll just get a couple of air vents in around just get the air circulating and uh, see how it goes hopefully because i'm i'm not going to keep the temperature in the shed really much above the outside temperature unless it gets really really cold hopefully the moisture will stay down and i won't get any dampness but yeah thanks for everyone that did point that out and as I say, I just at this stage, I'm not really sure how that's going to happen. Another thing that people are really interested in was my 120 watt tube heater. Now, a few people, quite a few, said, "Fred, you know, why didn't you put that underneath the bench there, and then it could have kept your legs warm whilst you're in the shack?" Well, yeah, I could have done that, but to be honest, it, it's not that kind of a heater. Um, I'm going to be having this. I've got it switched on at the moment because I want to test it for RF noise. But uh, this, when, when this is um, switched completely at its lowest setting, and I did some video earlier in the week here, so I'm just going to cut that in now. So, yeah, what happened, it was about minus one when I got up for work. So we went out to the car, and it was really, really, really frosty. So, and the, the heater was set on its lowest setting on a the thermostat, so I figured it had come on. So I just popped into the shed, and, yeah, sure enough, the heater was working, the heater was on, but it only just raised the temperature in the shed a, a couple of degrees, almost say three degrees at most, above freezing. That's, that's about all it's really going to do when it's just on its frost guard setting on the thermostat. So we're only just sort of trying to keep the real hard frost out of the shed and just try and keep the temperature above freezing so everything doesn't get too kind of cold and sort of too damp. But as, as far as heating goes, um, it's on at the moment and it's just getting up to temperature and when it's really really hot as i did on the last video you can't keep your hand on it but it's not like an infrared bar heater and it's not like a fan heater um it really doesn't make an awful lot of difference to the temperature in the shed it's just an ambient back back heater really um if you was going to be out here like if i do decide to come out and do a bit of radio i, I would need a fan heater or something a lot more substantial so yeah if i mounted it under the desk the the heat really i don't think would would penetrate sort of round the desk and sort of heat up this area which you see here because this is the area that i really want to heat up um someone said it's going to cook your radios night no, one it, it really doesn't get that hot it's only 120 watts remember it's why so they're just little background ambient heaters they're really bit built for greenhouses and things like that if you just want to keep the frost out of your sort of seedlings and your uh, plants 
then yeah, that's basically what they're for. So there's, there's no danger that any of these radios are going to get cooked. It just doesn't get. Another that thing hot. that's that's come up on Steve Stevens. He, he does a live stream. He's doing one tonight. It's Wednesday tonight, and hopefully I'll get this video up before he goes live. He generally goes live at about seven o'clock, and people, I think it's fantastic. I really leave him some really funny co comments about the shed, and they've nicknamed it the Fred's Space Shed because it's all of course silver with this bubble wrap stuff that I had over so it's become yeah Fred in the Space Shed and I really quite like it I just find it so amusing so I might build on that theme do you know I mean when I get a chance right later on maybe in the new year I might actually build on this space theme shed because I kind of like the concept of that but I want to say really really big thank you for the people that are leaving comments on sort of Steve's live stream now I'm sitting in, I'm sitting indoors absolutely loving it uh, I'm cracking up at some of your comments and I'm saying Steve's on tonight on Wednesday it's really getting to be a nice little social group we've got Del Boy on there we've got the Irish Ham George we've got Dipsy comes on we're awesome Dave comes on and uh, quite a few regulars now all come on there and we have a good little laugh uh, i really look forward to it i can't get on everyone depending on what dinner and things like that but i'll try and get on tonight but yeah. right okay for this test what we're going to do we're gonna, just going to zoom the camera in so if you look at the president truman there and i shall turn the volume up and if you listen very carefully i shall tell you what i'm switching on and what i'm switching off so at the moment we're in the EU mid block on the radio because of course this does all the European bands and uh, on FM bringing in about five to seven of noise that's the bit you want to watch as well as listening to the static so that's quite a bit of noise actually it does go like this sometimes but uh, yeah so I'm bringing about seven pound of noise so that's quite a lot so the bar heater is currently fully on so I'm going to switch that off so when I switch that off just keep an eye on that uh, that seven pound of noise there right okay that's with the bar heater that's with a tube heater switched off and I didn't notice any difference I'll do it again that's it switched on And that's it switched off so I didn't see any change there in the static noise I'm going to switch over to AM which is pretty much where you go I, I'm, I'm going to expect more interference if I get anything at all I'm going to expect it more on AM than I would on FM FM is uh, quite it's quite easy on interference I think that's why they originally chose it it does tend to filter out interference AM is where you're going to get it so here we are then channel A EU mid block seven pound of noise the heater is currently off I'm going to switch it on still got seven pound of noise going to switch it off still seven pound of noise so I think that sort of 120 watt tube heater that doesn't seem to be causing any problems with the little Truman we will test it on the commercial band on the Texan a bit later that's going to be a tougher test okay we we'll stick with the no, actually no we we'll go back to FM and what I'm going to do now let me just zoom out and show you I'm just going to switch on the LED lights around the power supplies in the, in the cabinet. That's another thing I want to test. So zooming you back in. Sorry about all this zooming in and that. So keep an eye on the poundage there. So we're getting about just six to seven pounds of noise. And I'm going to switch those on now. They're on. They're off. No, I didn't see any difference there. Gonna go on to the more challenging AM. Turn the volume up. They're off. They're on. So didn't hear any different any change there, didn't see any change in the noise level on the radio. So I can safely say those little those little blue lights, they're not causing a problem. Okay, the next ones that I'm gonna do. And these ones are probably more likely to give a problem. 
are the little Frankenstein fancy LED bulbs we've got now to do this sort of background lighting. So we're going to do the same thing again, the same, just, okay. just keep an eye on the receiving meter there. We've got a six to seven pound of mush coming in. It's quite a lot actually on the mid block. Going to switch those lights on now. And off. Didn't notice. Didn't notice any change on FM. Didn't expect it. Right, gonna go on to AM. Noise level six pound roughly. Lights going on. Lights going off. No. So there again. Didn't notice any change. So I think. They're pretty good. Right, the last one to try, and this, this one is probably going to be the problem one, is that little LED, cheap LED light that I've got under the desk there. And that's got two two strips of LEDs. It's got warm LEDs and blue cold LEDs. And uh, that's the one that I suspect if we get any trouble, we will get trouble with that because it's the cheapest thing that I've got in the shed. So same tests again. We're on FM. And I will be switching that on. So just watch the power meter there and listen for any static. Okay, the lights are on now. Lights are off. Lights are on. Didn't notice anything. I don't know about you guys. I'll just zoom out a bit. But no, didn't notice anything there. Going to do the same test that I am. Lights are going on. No, not hearing any change. Lights are going off. Yes, the, with the Truman, with the Antro 99, that doesn't appear to be causing me any issues just on AM on FM. Sh um, sideband shouldn't be as bad as I am to be honest for interference and of course this also includes the power supply strip plug I've got there that's got a little step down 5 volt USB transformer that is uh, also could produce RF and uh, that seems to be absolutely fine. Right, the final test and uh, this is a little bit unfair to be honest because I'm going to be using the Texan, I'm going to be using the commercial band on AM which is notorious for picking up any interference at all. I mean if you turn a light switch on and off in your house this definitely will pick it up. This is probably extreme, this is a, a bit unfair, it's not covering the frequencies that I'm going to be using on radio but this will certainly find out if there is going to be any interference. So this is just on the commercial band. I'm just going to tune slightly off. There we go, we'll use 835 mega, uh, kilohertz there. Right, let's see, let's, let's see, let's start off with, um, let's start off with these cheap LED power supplies. Now, I don't believe they're going to be completely RF clean. So let's give that a switch those on. Hear that? That is spewing out loads of RF there. Switch them off. And then again. Even a CB radio, <laughs> even a little Truman is making an RF. So the power supply is not completely clean. It's worse when the radio switched oh, those little fancy, little fancy uh, LED lights we've got on there. Oh, they're not too bad actually. I can't. Oh, I couldn't really hear any change there. We'll just do the bar heater, do the tube heater, just to see if that puts out any noise. Right, that's going to go on now. No, not noticing any noise there. We'll do the little strip, we'll do the little uh, power supply strip there.
No, not really. And then finally, we'll do that very cheap strip LED light that's under the, the uh, shelf here. This one I suspect is going to be bad. Yeah, hear that? That's one. Straight away, I'll turn it off again. I'll turn it on again. Yeah, that's definitely putting out a little bit of interference. Introducing to a shack is going to produce a little bit of RF noise, and uh, I think the worst worst thing was the CB radio itself when connected to the LED power supplies. But thankfully that was on the broadcast band and on sort of 11 metres where I live on the radio. It seemed to my ears anyway, it seemed absolutely fine. No nothing was disastrously uh, bad there. I think, you know, possibly when I'm on the radio, I, I certainly I think I'll keep the shelf light off. I mean, it's only really if I wanted to work on the lower bench. I'll definitely keep that off. But uh, the little... Fancy LED lights up there. Those ones, I think they'll be absolutely fine to be honest. I don't think they're going to be too much of a problem. Okay, that's it. Going to bring this one to a close. I do apologise. I, I know this is really, really basic, this uh, sort of testing for RF interference. And I, I know there'll be a lot of very clever, technically minded people watching the channel. And right now, they'll be shaking their heads and say, Oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's made, oh, he's a bit of an idiot there. He does not do it in the right way. You should have test you should have proper bench testing equipment, frequency testers. I haven't got any signal strength metering. I haven't got any of that fancy equipment. Um, just trying to sort of work with what I've got really so please bear with me and I do apologize if you find it a little bit unscientific but at the end of the day I'm a guy in a shed literally a guy and in a shed. Uh, yeah please 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 stay safe uh, one little thing I'll put in I've just seen the news today and in the UK they have tested and tried and passed an antidote uh, a two-stage a two-stage antidote for the COVID-19 infection virus whatever and uh, it could be as early as a couple of weeks they'll be sort of um, passing that on to people that are most at risk and they can be immunised and protected against COVID-19. That's the best bit of bloody news that I've heard for, well, a long time. So hopefully, that's, when that filters down to you know, all the rest of us, hopefully in looking into 2021 we can get some, uh, get some antidote and we can all feel a little bit safer and our stress levels can drop down a little bit but uh, so fingers crossed that that works out and they get that antidote out really really quick anyway that's it for now as always thank you ever so much for your time really appreciate it please leave a comment please give me a thumbs up i'd appreciate that but stay safe it's really dodgy out there and of course i'll catch you all on the next one cheers guys <laughs>